a star man playing on the right. His name is Nicholas Pepe and he's fucking dynamite. Come on, we've got him. We fucking got him. Shout out to Red Ken on Twitter because that chant is a banger. I hope it catches on, man. Hearing that through the stadium would be epic, I'm telling you. But back to Nicolas Pepe. What a signing for Arsenal Football Club at this point in time. Like We're at a crossroad right now. Obviously, we're trying to um, fix the error of our ways in the last five to ten years and change it all around now. We've put pressure on Kronke, me and a lot of my subscribers. Shout out the people that have supported me in the Kronke Out protest, the Show Us You Care protest and the hashtag We Care Do You protest because this signing, this signing indicates that they might just care. They might just care. I expect to see Tierney on top of it, but this is a massive signing. Like, if you look at my videos earlier on in the summer, especially before the Europa League final, I did a little video about attacking players, especially wingers, because that's what we lack width. As much as we lack a centre-back, we lack width as well. So my, my ideal, ideal signing this summer would have been Nicolas Pepe. But when we went on to just get hammered by Chelsea and back to Europa League football this coming season, I thought Nicolas Pepe was out of the question. I thought he would have moved on to a bigger and better club. But it wasn't to be. Well, well, we've got him there. Like, what more can I say? Like, what more can I say? Imagine... I'm thinking about the last time Arsenal signed a player I actually wanted. I actually wanted. It's been a while and it's, he might not be the name Sanchez was, he might not be the name Ozil was, but trust me, believe me, I've been watching him throughout last season, keeping a close eye from December, January times, and he is a special talent. He's coming into his prime. He, he's built, he's got all the attributes for this league. He's built for this league. He can excel in this league. When you look at some of the wingers in the league right now excelling, when you look at the, the, the top two teams, by far, Man City and Liverpool, what they, what they have on the, on the wings, it, special talent, very special talent that essentially gets them from A to B and really is a, is a focal point in their transitional play. And that's what them two teams are all about. Do you know what I mean? When you look at Sané, you look at Salah, you look at Mane, you look at Bernardo Silva even, who, who really stepped to the forefront last year. We needed a winger that can really stand out amongst the crowd. And Nicolas Pepe is a gunner. It is actually mad. Like, this must be the happiest video I've done since I started YouTube. It must be. Like, I can't. It is 100%. 100%. Because I, I haven't had this feeling since probably the Sanchez signing in terms of a player coming into Arsenal Football Club. But what it is, it, it's a sign that they've listened. They've listened. I've already had got a lot of people trying to mock, saying, oh, you must feel like a mug now and this and that because of your protest. No, I don't. Because at the end of the day, the protest is what could have applied pressure. I'm not saying it is, but it could have applied pressure and it built. It built on the Boreham Wood game, it built in America, and then it built with the hashtag We Care Do You campaign. So at the end of the day, maybe it, it all had a part to play in, in getting this name in it, in changing the focus of fans, changing the opinions of fans. And I'm not negative because I want to be negative or real, as I like to say. What it is, well, I want to be real, it's just I don't want to be negative. I want to be proven wrong. Everything I say that people deem negative, I want to be proven wrong. I'm not here hoping for the worst. I want to be proven wrong just like this. And I can hold my hands up and say, listen, well done, whoever sorted this out, well done, Raul. I'm not going to say Vinay because I don't think he has a part to play in any of these sort of negotiations because he's just like a a money man, a businessman. Kronke, cool, well done to you as well. Like Obviously, you've shown a bit of care. Like I said, we need a bit more. We need that Tierney signing over the line. Like, let's not mess about there. And ideally, a centre-back, but it's got to be quality at the end of the day. I don't want to sign a centre-back where in a few... In a few um, years, we're regretting it and we'll, we'll lump with him like we are with Mustafi right now. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I'm putting my hands up now. Do you know what I mean? Nicolas Pepe, Arsenal Football Club. What a, like, man is excited. I can't even lie. They told us, be excited. I told them, fuck off, show us. They fucked off and showed us. Do you know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, credit where credit is due. This is a massive signing for Arsenal Football Club. It's not the creme de la creme, but at the end of the day, like I previously mentioned, at this point where Arsenal Football Club are, 
this type of signing is the signings we need to push us into the Champions League spaces, to push us onto more money, to push us onto bigger signings. Perfect signing. The perfect signing. I can't even... I can't even go into how happy I am right now with Nicolas Pepe. Do you know what I mean? And yes, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, Turkish, you, you forgot about the defence and you forgot about... No, I haven't forgot about it, but let me enjoy. Let me fucking enjoy for once. Like I said, I haven't enjoyed since I've started this YouTube channel. You, I've highlighted that Nicolas Pepe was the winger I wanted from a long time ago. And it's Nicolas Pepe is the winger we have got. That we... I can't believe we've got him. Man United trying to rain on the parade with Dybala and Fernandez rumours and whatnot, but I don't give a fuck what anyone else is doing right now. All I care about is Arsenal Football Club and how we are improving. And I'm going to say it again, I don't know how many times I can say it in this video, a massive signing. Like, it's someone that's really excelled in the French League. He's, year on year, he's improved. And last year, like I mentioned before, behind Messi, he's the only other player to get over 20 goals and above, 20, um, above 10 assists in their league. He had 22 goals and 11 assists. When you compare that to our wingers, when you compare to the, well, to the people we played on the wings, it's very shy in comparison. Even if you couple them both up st statistical-wise, they don't come close to what Nicolas Pepe's output was for Lille last season. So how can you not be happy? I, even, I think I read yesterday that Nicolas Pepe um, was the most was the only player to have 100 plus shots, 100 plus fouls and 100 plus um, completed take-ons in all of Europe's five leagues, which is another thing that just shows you his talent. 100 plus fouls and 100 plus completed take-ons, that shows you he's very direct, he's someone that picks up the ball and runs at the opposition defence, causes problems. 100 shots shows you he's not shy to shoot and you know at Arsenal Football Club, we need players that shoot. Over the last years of Wenger and whatnot, we was playing this tippy-tappy football all around the box with players failing to shoot, with bringing man like Rizitsky and bringing man like Kozola. And in the end, even they started to be shy and shoot. And I just don't understand what was happening. But we've got a player now that seems to just pick up the ball, run at the opposition defence, pick out a shot, pick out a pass, and we move. We fucking move. Nicolas Pepe, you know, I didn't even see what number he got. Rumours are not, well, the rumours yesterday was 19, so I'm assuming that's what he got. Listen, the news just popped up just now and I just banged out a video, man. Because if you don't catch me at this moment, then I, I, I know when I really start to think about things and when I really start to weigh up our defence and really start to think about Mustafi again, my mood might change. But for now... I can't lie to you, I'm happy, man. I'm happy. And in comparison to a couple of our players, like I was reading on Sky Sports, his record of 151 minutes per goal is only better by Oba. Yes, this is a French league, but at the end of the day, it's more stats that back up the fact that he is a very direct, very pacey, very technical winger. And when I mean technical, I mean that, that left foot of his, it's, he, he, the close, he's got very good close control. He knows his weight of touch on the run is is accurate more often than not you know sometimes you need to keep the ball close and sometimes you need to just let the ball go and really chase it he knows what he's doing on the run he's a very confident player very confident player more, uh, more shots that, um, per game than any arsenal player and attempted more dribbles than any arsenal player um 5.8 dribbles attempted per game was far superior than any arsenal player so it just keeps it it just it just goes to show do you know what I mean? And that's nothing against the Arsenal players because at the end of the day, we played Obobi and Mickey on the wings a hell of a lot last season. And essentially, they're not wingers. They're not wingers. So as much as I've got onto Obobi in the past, it is what it is for him. But Mickey, along with Mustafi, I can't believe them to us to at the club. Hopefully in the next week, we can offload at least one of them. Mickey or Mustafi, man. Let's just offload one of them. Look, we've got Pepe in now. Surely we can let go of Mickey. Um... Reading a bit more, it says um, they were the third highest scorers in the Premier League last season, obviously us. But we did rely heavily on Oba and Laka. That's a good point because that's what I'm telling people now, especially the ones that are coming to me saying, oh, our defence is not improved and it's not been improved on. That's where we lack the most. And essentially it is. It's, it's been a problem for many years. I wouldn't say we lack the most in defence because we lack equally in defence and out wide. Like we've got centre-backs, but they're just shit. Out wide, we have no wingers. So essentially, the problem is it's pretty much was a level playing field until this signing, until Pepe came in. Now, of course, of course, by far, 
the area that needs improving is defensively. And obviously with the Caballero loan, when he returns to Real, I'm assuming next summer, centre-back and centre-mid will be a massive, massive priority for us. If we can get Champions League football off the back of this Pepe signing, off the back of Tierney coming in hopefully in the next week, then I expect to really, really, really show some ambition next summer. I can't lie to you. The pressure is kind of an Emery now in, in getting Champions League football. He's been backed in this window. He's, he's got a big player in. He's got other um, players here and there to fit in. So... I'm really expecting Emery to push for that top four, push for the Europa League and really essentially get us Champions League football by the end of the season. Um, looking more into it, 16 games where neither Oba or Laka scored and Arsenal won just four of those matches, scoring 1.1 goal per game opposed to 2.6 when Eva netted. That again shows how heavily reliant we was on Oba and Laka last season. Like I keep on saying, out wide, if you have no options, then the games where the teams are on top of Oba and Laka, because Oba and Laka are not going to be on top of every game. Let's, let's be honest here, they're humans. They're not going to be on top of every game. And when, when you're in a position where it's so easy and that them two are very, very close on the pitch, defensively, it can get very easy at times to manage them well. So we suffered in a lot of games. Like we did suffer in a lot of games. We had a lot of tight games that could have been opened up and really would be opened up by having a bit more width, having someone that is an out-and-out -out wide player that likes to start on either side and cut in or start on either side and really go around the byline. Do you know what I mean? One thing I want to say about this Pepe signing is Reese Nelson. I was really expecting big things from him this year. I still am, but I'm, it's going to be interesting to see how we, how we set up, how we implement him, how, how it goes, because I don't see Reese Nelson as a left-winger. I don't see him as a player that would want to cut in and um, like, like a Pepe, but on the other side. A friend of mine, when I was talking to them, they said that potentially is something that we can build into Reese Nelson. Obviously, adding to his game, he's at a point in his in his life, um, age wise, where he's still learning, he's still molding himself as a football player, and I get that, and I potentially get that, but I do believe that first and foremost, he's a right winger that likes to go down the line and. And cause problems with his pace and his um you know his little trickery so with pepe coming in pepe is definitely starting out on the right there's no two ways about it you're not spending 72 mil on a on a winger on one of the best young um wingers in in europe right now and not starting him in his favored position so it'll be interesting to see what happens with nelson that's all i'm gonna say it'll be interesting whether we'll probably start a world be out on the left pepe out on the right probably go with a what's that four two three one Something along those lines. But again, back to Pepe. Ah, oh, mate. Ah, oh, mate. You saw how sour it got for Tottenham and United fans a couple of days ago. You know what I mean? Chelsea fans are kind of staying quiet with their transfer ban. They're just sitting tight and hoping for the best with Lampard in charge. And um, like a Man United trying to rain on the parade with this Fernandes and Dybala. But Dybala doesn't even want to go to them. So I don't know what they're all... Um, shouting about. I opened my WhatsApp group this morning to see a friend that just waxing lyrical about the baller like this and that. Yeah, we've got in a bigger player. Well, whatever, whatever. I'm not looking at you lot. Focus is on my team right now. Focus is on Arsenal Football Club right now. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this Nicolas Pepe signing. It can't be negative, that's for sure. There might be a few comments saying, oh, but the defence is... Still yes, the defence is still a problem, but you know I'm the most pessimistic Arsenal fan you know I'm the I'm the one that really finds something negative to say even in a positive but with this signing as much as the defense is an issue let's just enjoy it because we needed a wide player whether it was this year whether it was next year we needed a wide player and there's also people before I do go guys there's also people saying oh but look at Liverpool they added Van Dijk and Alisson and that really pushed them to the next level and that's what we should be doing but at the end of the day before they added Van Dijk and Alisson, they had Salah, Mane and Firmino there, solid, working as a proper front three unit. They had goals going in left, right and centre. And then they added Van Dijk. And then it really changed things up. So as much as we do need it, I'm not saying we have to follow that exact model because we could have signed a big centre back this summer and then focused on the wings next summer. But the fact that we can get Pepe done now and maybe focus on the centre back next summer to shore things up, see how Oba, Laka and Pepe really get things going, see if they gel well, see how it goes. And next summer, improve defensively. 
I still want obviously Tierney to come in. I still want a centre back to come in. But the being realistic, what's the quality we're gonna get centre back wise? Is it gonna be the one we want, or is it just gonna be a name for name's sake? Is it gonna be someone we might regret in the near future and say, how have we got this guy at the club on this wages? It's like, well, how did it happen? Will it happen because we were so desperate for one? That we just brought one in in the last week of the transfer window in 2019. And here he is now. Do you know what I mean? It was the same thing happened with Mustafi. Let's not forget. We was all crying out for a centre-back. In the last week, I think it was, we signed Mustafi. Everyone seemed happy. And then here we are. Here we are, like, waiting to see the back of him. So let's not, let's not fall into that same trap again. Let's just enjoy Nicolas Pepe. Because 100% on me, he is going to be a success at Arsenal Football Club. He is going to be a fan favourite at Arsenal Football Club. He is really going to connect with the fans. He's going to connect with the club. And I think he's going to enjoy London. So we have a lot to look forward to in him. And hopefully, hopefully, we have more news to come in the next few days with Kieran Tierney. But like I said, guys, comment below. I also add my Instagram, TurkishLDN. Also add my Twitter, TurkishLDN. Um... And savour this moment, man. I don't know how many times you're going to see me this happy, do you know what I mean? This could all change. We go to Newcastle, we're in the fuck about. Back to negative Turkish. But yeah, love for the support, guys. Love for the feedback. Love for the comments. Love for everyone following, everyone watching. And keep, keep it up, guys. Keep it up.